Hey guys, I'm Annie of wholeassistant.com and today is our resource corner day, which means I will be interviewing a founder of a great resource for assistance. And with us today is Jeremy Burrows of goburrows.com. Welcome, Jeremy. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, so will you just please tell everybody a little bit about your background and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm married uh, to my beautiful wife, Megan. We have two boys, uh, Weston and Silas. They're five and seven. Uh, we currently live in St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm executive assistant to the CEO of an artificial intelligence software company called Jane.ai. Uh, it's a pretty fun startup. We're two years old as of yesterday. Um, and we're building an artificial intelligence chatbot for companies. So that's pretty fun. Um, I've been an assistant for uh, almost 12 years, um, EA for 12 years. And I, a few years ago when I was in between jobs, I started um, goburrows.com um, to help assistants and executives accomplish their goals without burning out. And so I do that with group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, my blog on the website, a uh, couple speaking engagements here and there, and then uh, online courses. Awesome. Awesome. What a great resource you are, I'm sure, for many assistants. And so I have to ask you, because um, this is a struggle that I deal with, like, how do you balance, do you find it difficult to balance the many various areas of your life, home, work, your entrepreneurial endeavors? Um, how does that all work for you? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, uh, balancing a pretty demanding full-time job, uh, two growing boys, uh, being a homeowner, and then the side hustle with goburrows.com. Um, but yeah, it's, I would say it's definitely difficult. Uh, one of the things I've done in the last couple years to help balance that is to make sure I have good boundaries on my days off and not check my work email, um, you know, make sure I do fun activities with my family and stuff like that. Uh, do you ever find it difficult to keep those boundaries? Yeah, I think the, the hardest times are when I've got some exciting uh, traction or momentum with goburrows.com or an event for goburrows.com at the same time while jane.ai might have a really big project or um, you know really 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 busy time for that so that th that's definitely a challenge um, because it's <laughs> I don't want to I'm definitely going to do my responsibilities for my for my day job, um, but I also want to want don't want to miss out on the opportunity to to continue the growth of my um, kind of side gig. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. In fact, um, work life balance is a thing that I'm still like my husband and I are constantly negotiating with one another, <laughs> you know, and, and like, I, I feel like I'm able to manage my week throughout the week because I get up really early and that's kind of how I manage whole assistant. But what's really funny is that like, like when I get home in the evenings, I just want to crash. And I think mm -hmm. for me, the hardest, the hardest part of all of this is how do I manage my weekends? Because I, I would like to do some things for whole assistant. Mm. Um, and I still want to be present with my family. So I just feel like that struggle is pretty constant. Um, so, and I think balance is a thing that every assistant deals with, you know, if it's not the blog or even if they don't blog or have any of that, like finding, um, setting those good boundaries that everybody will be okay with and happy with because we are so, um, the nature of our job is to help and support other people. So I think often we feel obligated to like, overstep our own boundaries which is no good so yeah yeah and i i think another thing i would say is one thing we've done on the weekends is my wife will say hey you know why don't i take the kids for you know two hours and you just work on your you know goburrows.com project and you know and then we'll hang out and whatever and that that helps because it's like okay i can really focus pay attention, get, get as much done as I can, and then shut it off and really focus on hanging out with them and enjoying time with them. Yeah, that's really great. That's really great. I love that. Um, and I love that your wife is so supportive too, you know, like, and that, you, and that she gives you that time that is just for GoPro. So that's awesome. Yeah. 
Really awesome. Okay, so in looking over your profile on LinkedIn, I noticed that you worked for a church. And um, I just wanted to have a brief discussion about that because I used to work for a church as well. Can you please give me some background on what that experience was like for you and give me a little bit of insight and my, my readers a little bit of insight? Yeah, so I, I was a pastor's assistant for the, the main pastor's assistant for about six years. And then before that, I was a couple of different pastor's assistants. Um, but I was in the organization for about 12 years. Uh, I moved straight from um, my parents' house to St. Louis to be an intern. So I was, I was pretty excited about the opportunity to work at a nonprofit that was really, you know, the primary goal was to help people. And so it was really exciting to be part of an organization like that. But to be honest, it was kind of it's kind of hard um, in, in the nonprofit world. It's, it's often hard to come to a consensus on what success looks like because it's, you know, nonprofit. It's, you can't just be like, well, what was our bottom line? What, what, what were our sales? Exactly. Um, so that was, that was always a challenge for me. And I've always been a business and entrepreneurial minded guy. And so I, you know, I enjoyed it, but I really, when I made the leap to the for-profit world, I, it was, it was pretty. It was a pretty obvious leap for me. Um, I've really enjoyed working um, in a tech startup world, and where most of the time success can pretty much simply be measured by did we meet our sales goal this year. Um, so it's 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 nice to have a, a little bit clearer uh, expectations of what 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 success means. But yeah, I I, I loved working the nonprofit and and helping people and. Um, the, the one thing I will say, though, is it's, it is very hard in nonprofit, in church world, um, to set boundaries. And um, in, in, my, in my sense, it was actually harder because, you know, we always had weekend services. So we, it wasn't like we always had the weekends off. Uh, whereas in the business world, it's nice because you really don't get that many emails on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to shut off and kind of get away. But I really burned out. Um, after working every weekend for, you know, almost, almost every weekend for 11, 12 years in a row. And so, um, that was definitely a con, um, to that setting. Um, because then even if you take, well, you know, you take Mondays off or you take Thursday, Fridays off and you work Saturday, Sundays, not everybody in the organization is taking the same days off. And so it just, you know, you're still getting emails, you're still getting pinged, you're still, you know, so it was, that was a challenge for sure. Yeah, I think for me, I think the challenge was that we were, it's not that we were understaffed, it was that, well, it kind of was. <laughs> I think I think we wanted to, there again, spend the money for our, our outreach programs, for that sort of thing. And, and so we were always trying to like make budget cuts and that kind of thing. And it really took a toll on the staff. And so I totally understand what you're saying about burnout in the nonprofit sector, because it, it happens frequently when people, um, when people want to spend the money and rightfully so on, on, on helping others. Right. And so, right. so then I ended up doing like the job of three people, you know, in like my one as, as my one position, like the requirement was that I, took on a lot of extra work, which actually I learned a lot in doing. Yeah, yeah. I learned, I learned how to prioritize my time, how to be really structured, how to like be productive when it's difficult and um, how not to waste a moment of it. But I know that I know, like, I just, I just had to, I just had to ask you because I was just so curious about what your answer would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your experience would be. So um, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay. So as an assistant, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation about being an assistant. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would say in some ways, yes. I think uh, an assistant can still be seen as someone who makes copies and picks up Starbucks and that's it. Um, but, you know, if making copies and, gra and grabbing coffee is what my boss needs in that moment, I'm happy to do it. It is part of the job. Um, but that said, people who think we are just assistants um, simply have never had a rock star assistant or have never been one themselves, and they're just clueless to what really goes on with our roles. So, I, you know, I think being an assistant is one of the most demanding and challenging jobs out there, and it really takes a unique uh, person and a uniquely skilled and gifted person to handle being an EA. Um, 
so yeah, I think there's, I think there is a little bit of a misconception. I think, um, I, I think that it's also, if, if you're in the, if you're in the like modern tech companies, it's, it's not as, it's not so much that way. I think if you're an old school, hundred year old oil company, then yeah, it's, it's seen, it's seen that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Totally. That's so funny you say that because I actually worked for a gentleman in the oil and gas industry for a little while. Um, and, and they really respected what we did and what we brought to the table, but it was a work in progress for sure. Um, mm -hmm. he just, he like had a very old school mindset, which kind of rubbed off on the rest of the company. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was definitely, it was definitely interesting, but, um, I think for me, I think, I think it's, it's more that each of our individual roles are so unique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like based on, based, based on our, our working style and our, our executives working style that like, it's really hard to define a role, like, a, like an executive assistant role can look different for each one of us because that right. chemistry looks different for each one of us. And so that's the challenge for me in, in explaining what I do for a living. And even to my family, my husband sometimes is like, you did what today? <laughs> You know, you spent your time doing what today? Right, right. <laughs> like, yep, I did. You're like, yeah, um, just wait till you find out what I have to do tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's 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 one of those roles that is ever changing and like um no two days look the same, which is it's appeal for me at least. But Yeah, it keeps it interesting, keeps you on your toes. Uh, you're never bored. My my favorite uh my favorite saying in, in this EA world is there's never a dull moment. No, there is never a dull moment. Um, going back to that religious organization, like I had to deliver holy water to someone once. I'm like, what? <laughs> I managed a crypts on our on our property. I'm like, I'm a crypt keeper now. Like that's just so weird. Uh -huh. um, but that's one of the things I love about what we do um, as well. So, yeah. okay. So I have, an, I have a question for you. Administrative, administrative roles have largely been held by women and as a rock star executive assistant, rocking it, um, encouraging other executive assistants, has, has the dynamic of this being a female dominated industry or job description or job um, impacted you in any way, like in any interesting way, or can you please just explain a little bit about what being a man in a female dominated um, industry looks like for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, it's, it's been fun. I mean, it hasn't really been, you know, it hasn't really created any, any issues or anything, I don't think, but uh, it's, it is kind of interesting being a, a minority because I'm, you know, as a white male, I'm definitely not a minority in most places. And so it's, it's interesting to go, like I went to Germany and um, spoke at the European central bank to all the assistants there. And uh, a few weeks ago, and, and I was the only male in the room other than the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was kind of funny. Um, but I think the, the only, only real interesting uh, challenges I would say is I it, it's not it's not really a big deal but in the networking and the events um, kind of side of things when it when it comes to local uh, assistant gatherings or events um, like our local YPO chapter had an admin meetup or an admin Christmas party holiday party and you know I was like okay yeah I'd like to go meet with some other you know assistants in the area and kind of connect and It'd be fun and then I kind of got I got the invite and it's like oh hey we're doing a you know an ornament exchange and I was like okay you know that's great or nothing against ornament exchanges but I, I you know I was like not something that I thought I would you know enjoy doing on a, on a holiday evening um, so then I pictured I pictured myself going to an ornament exchange and being the only male in the room and I was like and I'm also an introvert so it's kind of like all right this would be very interesting <laughs> Uh, so I ended up not going half because of that, half because I had just gotten back from Germany the day before and was trying to recover. But, um, but yeah, things like that. I'm like, okay, you know, there are male assistants, but I get that there are not many. So anyway, the, the, the um, activities being geared towards uh, women, I guess, is kind of the interesting thing that I faced. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, totally. I hadn't even considered that. That's really funny. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So you recently created a course, which I personally am just so excited about because I feel like it's going to be a great resource for assistants. Um, will you please explain this course that you created and just tell us a little bit about it? And then, um, yeah, I think we've got some synergy there. So I want to talk about that too. Yeah. So my, I, I kind of dove into the online uh, training, online course world last year. Um, started off with a email course called the assistant challenge and basically my goal with that was to send an email every weekday for 30 days uh, with a bite-sized challenge for assistants to kind of help them think outside the box and re remember to take care of themselves uh, remember creative ways to take care of their boss and network with other assistants so that that went really well it's, it's been well received um, but it's kind of a broader, bigger um, bucket of of tips and tricks and 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 challenges. So I had I, I in doing partly in doing that and partly in just reaching out and doing these coaching calls and 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 meet meetups and everything. Um, I realized that uh, interruptions, dealing with interruptions, was like pretty much the number one thing that assistants said that they dealt with. And you know, I was like, well, I, I deal with that too every day, so. Um, I, I can totally get that. So I created a course um, called How to Manage Constant Interruptions. And it's a very, it's very specific, specific, more, more zoomed in on this one issue. Um, and it's, a, it's through an online course platform called Thinkific. And it's, it's, it's more of a, you know, go at your own pace, go at your own speed and log in and, and kind of knock out the, the modules. So yeah, it was it was kind of the number one pain point or, or struggle that assistant said they had. So I basically just walked through um, ten different tactics that I use to manage and control um, and and really take control of interruptions um, every day. And so yeah, I've had about eight hundred people go through version one of the course, and so I'm excited to have updated and improved it uh, with more content for the next batch of, of assistants and. Um, even, even if you're not an assistant, I think it's still very helpful. Um, everybody pretty much deals with interruptions, but I do think assistants probably deal with more interruptions um, and this issue more than almost anybody in an organization just because of the nature of their role. So, yeah. I love that. And so if, to my whole assistant peeps out there, like, you know, if you've got my peak productivity roadmap that um, dealing with dealing with interruptions is a big, is a, is a part of that puzzle. And um, it's a part of being more productive. So please check out, I actually went through Jeremy's course. It's awesome. I recommend everyone check it out if, you, if, if you're struggling with being constantly interrupted. Um, so yeah, I, Jeremy, thank you so much. It's really awesome that you created it. I, I feel like it'll be a great resource for assistance moving forward. Um, and um, so you talk about using paper. Can you just give us a little, just a little taste of what you talk about using paper and, and like, I felt like that was a really unique part of the course in that mm -hmm. like a lot of people wouldn't turn to it, but can you please explain what you meant in that particular piece of the course so we can just have a little discussion about that because I found it really interesting. Yeah, so I, I hate paper. Uh, I, you know, I just hate that I have to print out documents. I hate that I have to you know, I still, every once in a while, especially if it's a government related thing, I have to fax a document or, you know, scan something and sign it. And, um, you know, it's, two, it's 2019. I don't know why we have to, you know, kill, kill more trees. Um, but that said, that said, I, I think there are times when our digital um, kind of overload just hits us and we've got 500 unread emails in our inbox. We've got a to-do list that's more than one screen. So we have to keep scrolling to see the rest of our to-do list. Um, we have people bugging us here and there. So there are times when I'm just looking at my screen just like a, like a zombie and just like, okay, what am I gonna do next? And I think those are the times where I kind of have to slap myself and grab a post-it or grab, grab a small piece of paper and okay, take a deep breath and write down, okay, what are the things that I really need to do today? And I'll just start there. And so I think, I think that is, is probably the, my, one of my biggest uses for paper. And then the other side with um, regards to interruptions, 
if somebody comes by my desk and I've, I'm kind of in the same mode where I'm just overwhelmed with how much stuff I've got and going on and I'm in the middle of a big project or I'm in the middle of ordering, you know, booking flights or, you know, something like that. Then I have a little post-it note right on my desk. It's one of the few things I have on my desk and, um, I will, you know, if it's somebody else, like if it's somebody in the, on, in the team, like one of my peers, I'll usually say, Hey, would you mind emailing it to me? But if it's like my, if my boss walks up to me and says, Hey, you know, then I'll grab it and I'll, if I, if I don't have my email ready and I can't just type an email real quick to myself, um, cause I'm in the middle of booking flights or whatever, then I'll just grab a post-it note and I'll just write down what he says. And that way I'll, you know, I won't forget it. So yeah, paper, I have a love hate relationship with paper. <laughs> That's really funny. So you, so talking, going back to this whole idea of like managing distractions, I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed in myself and in talking with other assistants is managing distractions you can control. Like, like social media, we've got our phones, we've got our eye, we've got our eye watches, you know, we've got, we've got all these things, all these distractions um, that were meant to help us actually. So the phone was meant to be a help to us. It was meant to make things really convenient for us. Um, but then you've got social media too, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, like, um, and so like I talk a lot about like managing those distractions you can't control and putting your phone down or away or on silent or managing like the notifications you get on your phone so that if you get a call, it's a call that you need to take um, instead of like, like a Facebook message that you need to respond to. Um, and I'm so passionate about this because I feel like if we can even just get rid of those things that we can control, <laughs> it'll mm -hmm. make, it'll make our lives so much easier and it'll make our work so much more productive, our day so much more productive. Um, so how do you manage those for yourself? Like how do you manage those controllable distractions? Yeah, I pretty much turn all my notifications off. Um, we use Slack as our instant message, um, platform for, um, you know, internal communication and some people use Skype for business or, um, what's the other one? Jabber or, you know, different ones like that. Um, but I, I, I literally, I, I don't remember, I probably was a few months ago when I started doing this, but I, I don't ever put my status as, as present or active. Mm. Um, and it's funny because people still ping me if they need me. <laughs> But it's, but I feel like it's a little bit of a filter and a guard against just anybody and everybody always pinging me. Yeah. Um, so if it's kind of like a check, like, oh, it doesn't say he's active, but I do really actually need something versus, oh, he's active. I'll, you know, I can talk to him and whatever. It's, it's, it's maybe it's less inviting, but it's, it's, it's more productive. Um, it has been for me. So I don't, that's one thing I do. Um, I, ha I make sure I have all of, I have my do not disturb settings all set so that, I don't get any notifications from like nine or 10 at night till seven in the morning. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll like on the weekend, I'll just turn it, I'll snooze my notifications for, you know, 24 hours or 48 hours so that it just kind of goes through the whole, the whole Saturday, Sunday. Um, I don't have hardly any notifications on my phone. So my iPhone, I don't have hardly anything that pops up on the lock screen. Um, almost every app that I have is basically turned off so that it, it will not pop up or, or, or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I do. And then, yeah, as far as like social media and emails and all that stuff, I try to just really dive in deep and focus on them for, for a certain amount of time and then just leave them alone and, and don't think about them for a while. So kind of do time blocks or um, chunks of, of, focus time on, on each, you know, well, the other thing I will say I, for Facebook, I have a newsfeed eradicator plugin for Google Chrome that basically when I go to Facebook, I, I can't, it hides the newsfeed. So I can't actually see anything that anybody's posting and I can't get sucked into the vortex of cat videos and funny memes. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty, I didn't know that even existed. Yeah, it, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if they have it for other browsers, but for Chrome they do, and it's called the News Feed Eradicator. And it, it has, basically it replaces it with like a inspirational quote, and you can like customize the quotes, I think. 
Uh, <laughs> but what's cool about it is if you, you know, I'm, I'm one of the admins on our business Facebook page, you know, I've got my GoBurrow stuff going. So there are, there are, you know, I, I do like to check in on, um, throughout the day on, on different posts or different business related things. But what this allows me to do is go to my notifications and go straight to those posts and deal with that without getting pulled into things that I don't need to be looking at because I can't even see the news feed. So that's, that's one of my, my favorite uh, additions. I think that I did that about a year, a year and a half ago. And um, it's a game changer. Yeah, no, it sounds amazing. Like I'm going to check it out. Um, so you, I want to go back to something that you just mentioned about like um, about time blocking. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that's really important. And I know for me, for social media, like the times I check so social media are generally around 10 o'clock in the morning and around two o'clock in the afternoon. That's mm -hmm. all about myself because otherwise I can totally get sucked in as well. Um, and so like, can you explain a bit, a little bit more about how you time block for yourself and about like, um, what that looks like for you and do you batch things together? Do you group things together? Like how does, how does the day look for you in terms of getting things done? Yeah. I mean, I kind of, uh, it's, it's interesting. I've, I don't do a very, I recommend, I, th I think I, I recommend that most people do very strict time blocks and I'd try to do it for my boss as well. Um, for me, I find that I, because when I look at the calendar view, because I see my boss's calendar, the room calendars, you know, my boss's wife's calendar, uh, you know, I've got kind of all these, it's just a crazy, crazy mess. I don't like to personally put my calendar filled as well. Like I put reminders of what I need to do in those times. So I, I will more block off projects or, or tasks that I need to do. And I'll say, oh, you know what? I need to do this. Uh, we're, raising, we're raising a series B round. And so I need, to, I need to schedule a bunch of meetings for my boss related to this. So I'm going to block out a two-hour chunk here for that. Or I'm going to block out a time to send reminder emails at this time. And it's more, it's more like that for me personally. Um, but I also, I think part of that is my, my work style and my personality. And so what I will end up doing kind of more naturally, as opposed to like actually on my calendar is I will get there in the morning and I'll put my headphones in and I'll just empty out my inbox and focus really hard on that for a while. And then I'll do it again, basically after lunch. So it, it's kind of the, it's kind of the first thing in the morning and then after lunch are my, um, not on the calendar, but my regular rhythms of when I really lock in and say, all right, I'm going to put my headphones in, crank the music up so I can't hear anybody around because we have an open office, which as an introvert, I really don't like. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I'd say in the morning and then right after lunch are, are kind of my two real focus, dig deep, like try to ignore everybody else and, and get everything done uh, rhythms. So. Yeah, I think for me, I didn't even I didn't even think about this before, but I don't use my calendar at all, unless except for meetings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got my my meetings on my calendar, and that is it. Because otherwise, otherwise, I find that like it's just too stressful, and uh -huh. I need a bit more flexibility through my day. What I do, like I don't know if you know, but I love Trello. That's that's my that's my mm -hmm. app my to dos, and so I will group things together in Trello to knock those things out together. Um, so that's how I manage my, my, my time personally. I just find it to be really easy that way. And, and that way I'm not scheduling myself and having anxiety for when I don't stick to my schedule because my boss needs something or because like, yeah, that's, that's the other thing. It's like the flexibility that an assistant needs. It, it, it can be hard, but I, but I think I usually, I think the first thing in the morning thing, I get there a little bit earlier than everybody and, and it's a pretty safe time you know like it's, a, it's it's not often that that early morning chunk gets taken away by some whatever but the late morning and late afternoon it's like there's always something that pops up at the end of the day or there's always something that pops up right before lunch and so yeah part of that is how your how your work culture and your in your boss kind of how his his or her time flows and making sure that you're you're open <laughs> when he comes over and says hey i need you to book this flight or 
you know, like yesterday, they were like, hey, we're going to go to Atlanta and meet with Coca-Cola on Friday. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is pretty important. And um, it's like, can you book these flights? And so I'm like, all right. So I had to drop everything. But thankfully, I had been focused in that morning slot and that after lunch slot that I was pretty much caught up for the day. And I was able to just, all right, jump in and do this task. So. Yeah, I would full. I fully agree with like the morning slot. Like I'm, I'm actually the first in the entire office space. We work out of a, out of like a. It's not really a technically a shared office space, but there's several different renters in our space. Mm-hmm. And I find that I'm always the first one in because mm-hmm. I like I like to do what you do, and I like to get to my emails first thing before I have the chance to be interrupted. I feel like it helps me lay out my day a little bit better too. Yeah. I can know what to expect. I can know like, okay, so it's a certain point I'm going to have to order wine and have those bottles sent, you know, all those requests that I get um, in the late afternoon throughout the night, like I can actually deal with them in the morning. Yeah. So is that your, is that your car, the solo car uh, all alone in the parking lot or is that somebody else? (laughs) This is my view guys. This is my view. No, it's, um, that is not my car. That's for the building next door. Oh, okay. <laughs> like my car is down below. Like nice, nice. Garage under our building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'm kind of glad that's not my car. Actually. I was gonna say early bird gets the parking spot. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. I like that I've got my pick of the spots down downstairs for sure. Nice. Okay. Um, so. So obviously, we've been talking a lot about distractions today and how that can be an inhibitor for productivity. Can you think of any other like inhibitors to productivity aside from distractions? Um, I think that personally, well, I think that if you as an assistant are worried about what your boss is, thinks of you and or worried about a, uh, the approval of others, then I think that that's going to hinder your productivity because you're always going to be like, Oh, are they talking about me? Or, Oh, are they, what do they think about me? Am I, you know, and Oh, I'm, you're just not going to get anything done. You're just going to be too worried about um, pleasing um, the other people in the office or worried about what they think. And uh, so I think that's one of the, one of the biggest inhibitors uh, in, in coaching assistance. I, you know, I just hear it all the time. It's like, well, you know, I want to be more confident and, you know, it's like, okay, if you, if you, if you equate your performance at work with, your value as a human being then you're you're going to always struggle with that you're not going to have confidence and you're not going to be um be able to focus and be productive because you're going to be worried about um what people think and what what the impact is that your job performance is going to have on your personal um worth and value and so anyway i think that's i I think that's one of the biggest things that not many people talk about but i think that's uh, a root issue of um, focus or lack of focus and productivity for um, for assistance, especially. Oh my gosh, that is so good and so powerful and so true. Um, yeah, I just I love that. So I think, and I think, and I think that when you let go of what other people think of you, and you're not inhibited that way, then then your job performance goes up too. Like right. your personal performance at your job goes up too. It's it's weird. When we're worried about what others think and about our job performance, it goes down. Mm-hmm. So it goes up. I think just by the very nature of what you're talking about, it just takes up so much headspace. Right. Really good and very powerful and I think spot on. Um, I think especially, I know for me, whenever I make a mistake, um, that's when I, that's when I get concerned, like, Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. What was I thinking? Um, but mistakes happen to, to all of us. And, and I've learned for myself that like, and I actually heard this from another assistant one time that if I give myself five minutes to beat myself up about it and then move on, like mm-hmm. actually let it go, um, mm-hmm. that doesn't affect the rest of my day. Like it otherwise would. Yeah. Cause you have, you have to, you actually have to learn from the mistake you have to actually let it hit you hard enough that you're not going to do it again. Like you're going to feel the pain of like, Oh man, I don't like how that feels. So I'm just not going to make the mistake again. Otherwise, if you don't let it affect you a little bit, then you're, you're just not going to learn and you're going to do it again. You're going to go, Oh, whatever. Just, you know? Um, But yeah, I think the not taking things personally is a big thing um, Mm -hmm. on, on this topic is just, 
you know, when you do make a mistake, you know, don't, don't take it personally. Or when their boss says, Oh, well, why did you do that? You know, like, don't take that as a personal hit. It's just, you know, you're, you're in a professional setting and you made a mistake and you own it and you learn from it and you move on. You don't, you know, let it, let it hit you too hard personally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I feel like that's when growth can happen is when we're open to other people's input and open to other people's feedback and we face our own stuff because if you, if you aren't willing to face your own stuff, you're never going to grow, you know, yeah. you aren't willing to accept and admit your mistakes. You're just, it's never going to happen. Yep. Um, okay. So my final question for you, what is one thing you would tell your junior professional? Self? Um, I would probably, yeah, I, I would tell my younger self, uh, to read more. Um, I did not read much at all. Uh, in fact, I, I still don't really read technically. Some people, I use audiobooks. I do audiobooks. I got, I fell in love with audiobooks a couple years ago and I've listened to more books in the last 12 months than I did in my whole entire life. Um, and I, yeah, I just, you just learn so much. You, uh, it helps you really focus on one thing at a time. And, and the reason I like audiobooks, um, well, two re two big reasons are one, I can do it while I'm, you know, walking around or at the grocery store or, uh, driving to work, you know, I can, I can learn and grow in that way. But the, the other reason I like it is as an, as an assistant who stares at a computer and reads emails and reads texts and reads notifications all day, every day, and just looks at a screen. I tried, you know, I, I tried a Kindle for a while and I was like trying to read on a Kindle and I was just like, man, like I stared at a screen all day and then I was, and then I was like, okay, what about paper books? But then it's like, oh, you got it. They're more, more expensive, can be more expensive. Um, and there, you know, then you've got a bunch of books laying around and it's just cluttered and it feels whatever. So I finally tried audiobooks and it's just so refreshing to learn and, and focus on something one thing at a time without with while also being able to rest my eyes. And so, um, so yeah, I like that. That's why I love audiobooks. But anyway, yeah, I would tell myself, read, read more, read more, read more. A lot of people told me that when I was younger, <laughs> you should be reading more. You need to be a good reader. And I, I wish I would have discovered audiobooks or really tried audiobooks harder. Um, but it also, they also weren't as accessible as they are now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Read, read more is what I would have said. <laughs> I love that. I'm a big fan of podcasts and mm -hmm. big yeah. fan for that very reason, because I spend so much time, you know, on a screen all day. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time to let me interview you. Yeah. Um, so be sure to check out Jeremy's website, goburrows.com. Be sure to check out his course on eliminating distractions. Um, and stay tuned for next month when I will be on what, when I will be interviewing someone else about another amazing resource for assistance. And I look forward to talking to you guys then.